the sisters are coming. Hi, welcome to the channel. I'm going to talk about building a Sisters of Battle army. All the things you need to think about, models you should buy, and how you can play them. My first thoughts about Adeptus of Serratus, that they are a beautiful army. Lots of amazing models, fine detail, small pieces, and that does make them one of the more difficult armies for painting. They can certainly be a showcase army, just be prepared for the amount of effort to paint each model. As a quick overview to start collecting, obviously pick up the 9th edition codex. There are some extra rules in some of the Warzone books, but you don't really need that to start playing. And if you're looking for the points, then look at free apps, free websites, just to get the latest details. They are currently competitive in the meta, but if you're looking for how to build a competitive Sisters of Battle army, this probably isn't the video for you. In terms of building your army in 9th, they're not really a static gunline army, so all the tank units aren't as good anymore. Just think about building units that are going to be advancing forwards, shooting with short range weapons and engaging with melee. For me, the jury's out whether it's worth buying Sisters second hand, as you can often find problems with the build or the paint quality. It's always a risk, but it's up to you. Unlike for other armies, the first point of call isn't a start collecting box because there isn't one and there isn't a combat patrol either. So you are looking to piece together your army from different units. They only have one troops choice, which is the Battle Sisters. Now they are actually a great infantry squad and you probably should be picking yourself up at least two boxes of them. Lots of configuration, lots of gear, and they look fantastic. You're actually quite spoiled for the Battle Sisters army to have two of the best characters in the game at the moment. So you've got Celestine and Morven Val, but there are some others cheaper in both the purchase cost and the game points cost, such as the Canoness, Dogmata, and Dialogus. A quick look at Celestine. I've got a video about her, so please check that out on my channel. She does massive damage output, and she's very difficult to remove as she can stand back up on a 2+. plus. Morven Val, also I've got a video about her, so please check that out but generally gives out big buffs she's got some good shooting got a big punch in melee and she has a, an ability to fight twice once per game she's also difficult to kill i'd be surprised if any sisters list doesn't include Marvin Val. you can s is cheap gives out reroll ones to hit and lots of other buffs. The Dogmata, the Dialogus are also your ways of getting at the Warhim casting. If like Simply Warhammer you're going to layer in rules slowly then perhaps don't even worry about the Warhims. The Sisters also have one of the most detailed and beautiful models in 40k at the moment, the Triumph of Saint Catherine. It's a proper centerpiece but at £65 it's also a big price. It delivers tons of buffs and it's still competitive to play but having one of the biggest data sheets in the game it's actually quite difficult to play. The next key unit for choice has to be a Rhino and it's actually even better for the Sisters of Battle because you get your 6 plus Invun from Acts of Faith. I'll go through some of the other key units and then some other potential picks. It's up to you which ones you like. You'll see a strong theme through a lot of these of really good melee and to start off with you've got the Repenture who are devastating, especially when they're taken in the bloody rows. This is one of the best melee units in the game, but they are a bit of a glass cannon. In one turn, they could easily take out a tank or even a knight. Another amazing melee unit who are also cheap, the Arco Flagellants. Standard, there are four attacks at strength five. You can buff them up to six attacks at strength six for paying a bit extra. And there's a stratagem, which gives them extra attacks taking them to six or nine, depending on whether you paid the upgrade. So for a squad of 10, you're looking at 40 to 90 attacks. The Mortifiers are still the best build for that unit instead of the Penitent Engines. Strong all round, fast, durable and fighty. And with the Heavy Bolters, they're able to deal a bit of damage on the way into melee. Sacrosants, the new core unit that's been brought out, they're very fighty. You've got a two plus armor say, four plus invun, so really hard to kill. So definitely an objective holder. Retributors have always had devastating firepower. They have lost some of their ability in ninth, not being able to move and fire without penalties, but still carrying a lot of melt fire, they're delivering a lot of damage. This is a contentious one because I particularly love this model, but it's the Exorcist. Absolutely beautiful model, takes forever to paint. It is a gunline unit and it has taken some nerfs in ninth by losing core, down to AP minus two and only toughness seven. However, it does deliver quite a lot of damage from range. Now we have the Flying Girls, the Seraphim and the Xeraphim. The Seraphim have had a roll change in ninth. They're more of a utility unit now, but they are cheap and can deep strike. And with the Hand Flamers and their Deadly Descent Stratagem, when they first join the boil, they can deliver 36 strength 4 hits, which is really impressive. It's a shame to see the Xeraphim have a dip in the ninth Codex by losing their reroll wounds, but they do gain an attack, and now they're a fast attack unit rather than elite. It's a slot they're more likely to be taking in. This was a quick overview, starting building sisters, not covering every unit. Let me know in the comments if you think I've missed one that I should have included. See you again soon!